Hi, guys. Um, so we'll just start without the uh, embarrassing stuff. Um, continuous workflow implementation uh, is never a one-size-fits-all solution. Every product in every company does that differently, either due to the nature of the product or uh, the technology and different or other different considerations. Um, this talk might not be relevant as a whole, but we hope some parts may be relevant to some of you. So this is Shalom. Uh, aside from speaking Mandarin, uh, he also is chief uh, chief Dev Happiness Officer uh, of the mobile development of the mobile developers at Wix. And uh, I'm Rotem. I work mostly on Detox and uh, on our CI flow. Um, as part of our mobile infrastructure team at Wix, our team. Uh, uh, our team helps defining and managing mobile stack across the company. Uh, we mainly do infra work, and uh, we try to improve the dev experience by creating tools for our developers, uh, automating all the things, and arguing, like a lot of arguing. Uh, the unique thing about the work that we do is that most of it is open source. Um, the core business of Wix is is helping small businesses with their online presence. Either if it's a simple site, blog, or online store, showcasing professional photography, music, videos, and, and, and more. Every product group in Wix is an independent entity, and it develops its product with minimal dependencies while sharing infrastructure with, uh, with other product groups, uh, whether if it's server, mobile, or, uh, or web. Um, the Wix app is a complementary product. Um, it contains many interoperable products, uh, either in, in a mobile form, complementary to the web product, or a totally new experience. The, the product requirement drove the current architecture of, of our app. Um, the way we build and the way we develop, uh, integrate, and release, and the release process. And this is what we want to share with you today. So um, the Wix app is our official iOS and Android app. It's written from scratch in React Native. It has been being developed for in the past two years. Uh, in terms of engineering efforts, um, it currently um, there are currently 40 developers working on the project and or supporting it with infra tools like we do. Uh, the majority of the code is written in JavaScript, and we try to keep our infrastructure native and business logic in JavaScript. And the app is cross-company is cross effort. It currently incorporates code from seven different product groups. Uh, the fact that each group is independent drove for a modular architecture. Uh, the app consists of multiple product modules. So a module is an independent product unit. It can communicate with other modules. It consists solely of JavaScript code. It has special API uh, declaration file. and all modules runs on top of the engine. Uh, the engine is our, uh, is our way of conforming and allowing all module owners um, a way to run their uh, tests separately, the tests and development separately uh, of everything else. Uh, but at the, same time, th at the same time, they use exactly the same native dependencies and JavaScript APIs as the full application. In a sense, it gives the freedom to, to treat modules as pluggable extensions to the application, enabling creation of independent apps if, if you want to. Um, the engine is packed as an NPM package, holding all native and JavaScript sources, a command line tool for common tasks, and also a pre-built version of our, of our app or, or APK. Uh, this allows module owners to skip the native compilation process, and which is unnecessary for them, uh, since most of their, sorry, all of their business logic is JavaScript anyway. So the module API is the app's way of registering and communicating between the modules. It lets each module define its API, export components, methods, and register for app-wide events. Um, so every module declares its own API. Uh, it has few lifecycle hooks like init and on upstate change. And it exposes components uh, for uh, making components from that module accessible to other modules. Things like uh, full screen views or just views, shared screens, uh, could be error screens or uh, things in, in that, um, like checkout screens, and et cetera. Um, methods is like an RPC-like interface that allows remote calls from, for, to other modules functions. 
and uh, and a few more uh, register a broadcast for a PubSub. It's a PubSub interface uh, for system-wide events. Um, okay, so each module is free to use. Every native extension is available in the engine. They communicate via the module API, and the engine also provides other infrastructure, native and JavaScript, for A-B testing, BI logging, uh, and more. Each extension is being developed independently uh, as well. So most of them are open source projects. Um, you might know a few of them, React Native Navigation, Camera Kit, our keyboard extensions, notifications, UILib, Interactable, Detox, and more. Uh, React Native Navigation, for instance, is being treated as a completely independent product. So here you can see uh, React Native Navigation's end-to-end -end test suite using Detox for both iOS and Android. Um, that's the V2 uh, of React Native Navigation, which will be released very soon, we hope. In order for uh, developers to be able to test their model uh, changes on the full app without seeing any work in progress on other models, we are running a special integration flow. So let's take a typical uh, work week. Uh, model development is uh, being done on its own example project, where it's running on top of the engine. Uh, when developers finish the development work, they create an internal, oh, that's not passing. <laughs> an internal release candidate for that. Uh, and this release candidate process creates a special dog food flavor for our full app. Uh, that's uh, the orange icon that uh, you consider, uh, where it uh, integrates all the stable version of each module and the release candidate version of that module. This allows developers, of, uh, developers to test their changes on a stable environment before. And you can see they're marking the module as safe for production, aka GA. So, when it comes a uh, time for the, week, for the weekly release, the, the production version, um, as you can see the blue icon uh, on the bottom, uh, it picks up all the modules in the GA and releases it to uh, the EPA to test flight and the APK to Google Play. Um, okay, so you can see the Wix app repo is essentially, it's only a package JSON with the dependencies and a few engine configuration and some build scripts, that's it. By default, uh, for standard uh, builds, it will, it will just use the version marked as a GA, saying they are ready for release. This is an example uh, from, uh, from the Wix app. Uh, here we can see the dependencies with all the, all the models that are configured as, uh, to use GA. In fact, triggering those special flavor builds, setting tags, and keep it all uh, organized required uh, building a special system for that. We call it uh, Poco. Poco started as a little POC, so Poco and some Spanish uh, little bit, Poco. Poco is a tailor-made solution. We use it uh, for our model lifecycle. Uh, if it's for building a model or NPM tag management, uh, Poco integrates with endpoints like the private NPM we use, the Team City, which we use for building the models, uh, GitHub for you know, saving the code, showing the commits, and Slack for audit logs and events. Here we can see the model state in every point in time. As you can see here, the model version, the first uh, column. Then you have the one-up build. This is the, this specific version on the one-up uh, on the one-up build, if success or fail, and also the npm tags. Also show the, uh, the all the models contained in in the same released app. It enables to um, enable to uh, creations of custom apps with the specific model versions, and also enables custom flows with different npm tags per build. For example, when we need to upgrade the React Native version, we can create custom tag for that for the version that we built. So, let's talk about our infrastructure stack. Uh, what are we building? We're building iOS, Android, JavaScript. Uh, our infrastructure, the hardware, is uh, Mac OS uh, agents over VMware with nested uh, virtualization for running the x86 Android emulators and also the iOS emulators, of course. The CI server, as I showed you, is uh, TeamCity. We use, we use it for building, testing, and versioning. 
And then the modules are being published to internal AP, uh, NPM, which plays nicely with React Native. So how does the dev cycle look like? Module or, uh, or engine code change uh, are pushed to GitHub. This code change is triggering module build on uh, TeamCity. Continue, uh, test, uh, continue to test step, and if all good, get version and publish to NPM. The internal release process, which is the RC process for, um, for a module, is uh, being uh, in POCO, it's triggered in POCO. As you can see, this is triggering the one up, the Wix, the Wix app uh, application, uh, build with uh, this uh, specific uh, RC version of this module. And uh, if uh, all okay, the IPA and the APK are uploading to Ablade. The Wix app release, the GA thing that we released to the stores, is also uh, int uh, triggered via POCO. And it, this is building in a team city, which uh, the GA, GA thing that, like I showed you before, the package JSON with all the GAs. And then the IPA is uploading to test flight, and the APK is going to Google Play. We use versioning scheme uh, that supports patching. Why? Because life sucks, and uh, sometimes you have bugs, and you, you need to create some odd fixes. Uh, we do that by creating a branch from previous release of a certain module, by following the state of the project uh, Git tree. Uh, version is automatically cal calculated in the following manner. Major is from the package JSON. We take the major in the version package, uh, package JSON. The minor is the number commits in the master. And patch uh, is the number commits in a certain branch since diverge from the master. So if, if the build is master, it will be zero. Uh, when building the app, we, need, we keep a shrink wrap file containing all the result mo uh, ver model versions. When we need to release a hotfix, we use that uh, sh uh, shrink wrap uh, state and only change patch versions of the patched models. So t testing is a big part of our workflow. Um, so we use the testing pyramid, of course. Uh, we use Jest for testing our unit logic. Um, most of the components are written with uh, Remix, which is our opinionated way of using Mobix, uh, which is also open source. Uh, surprisingly, we use Detox for end-to-end -end tests. Uh, so in the past 11 months, uh, we've been using Detox to automate and improve our release process uh, We've, been, we've used it uh, in multiple testing scenarios, crunching tons of synchronization bugs in Detox itself, and came with a few understandings as, as to what makes sense to testing with Detox. So in general, there are two types of tests that we do uh, uh, using Detox, production E2E and mock D2E, which is like UI automation. Uh, so the main characteristic of production E2E is that it involves every part of the system. Um, so it is the closest thing to, uh, to the real user. Uh, it has many uncontrollable uh, variables that, that each can affect the test outcome. Uh, if the network is down, <laughs> the test will fail. <laughs> <laughs> if, if our server has issues, the test will fail. And if it gets a different A-B test variant for each run, the, te the test will fail, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so the pros of production E2E are uh, that these tests are as close as possible to a real user experience, uh, logging with the real users against production endpoints. Uh, they're very easy to set up, um, and they're very easy to write. Just find an element, interact, and expect and for something to happen, and that's it. Uh, these tests can provide very high confidence um, if they were not flaky and slow. Um, so the main benefit of these, um, of, of that they can, they can help QA engineers replace manual testing uh, methods. But again, it will be never rock solid. Uh, therefore, it is very hard to, to maintain. Mock D2E, on the other hand, uh, tries to eliminate all those settings and by, by just adding controlled and predictable environments, uh, replacing all endpoints with a mock server and data. Uh, server and client communication can be tested uh, using contract tests, which is something that we try to incorporate as well. Uh, so the pros of Mock D2E, uh, that these tests are much closer to, uh, to the actual code. They're stable, uh, using mocked endpoints, controlled and predictable uh, environments, such, such that provides the same input all the time uh, on every test. Uh, 
it, they're very easy to maintain. Once, you, once they've been written, they, they just work. Uh, the cons are that they re require more setup and much harder to write, since we need to take care of mocking and controlling our mock data rather than just the server or local configuration. Uh, so how do we mock with, uh, with Detox? So in order to use mock server, we need to make sure the app knows uh, it should not try to connect our real server endpoint. Our way of doing it is by creating a new flavor of our JS bundle, um, one which uses different endpoints than the production one. So this is supported by Metro Bundler already. And by creating any file.etoe.js, we can override any file.js uh, and create a custom JS bundle. So we're setting mock endpoint in endpoint e2e.js. Uh, this will replace the one in endpoint.js. And then we're adding a configuration, a certain configuration to rncli config uh, to, to the root setting, get source extensions. Uh, this will prioritize any given source extensions over the default ones by triggering each of these commands on the bottom of the screen. Uh, the bundler will take the e2e.js over .js. So instead of bundling endpoint.js, we just bundle endpoint.e2e.js. This is an actual test from our mock e2e test suite on the engine itself. Uh, mock server is an object that lives inside a test runner <coughs> node process. It can be altered during the test uh, and using simple function calls. And once we set the mock data, we just launch the app. Now we can run mock tests and verify that the application can persist login information, and it does not show login window in subsequent launches uh, once the user has logged in. You know, they say if it's not monitored, it's not working. So what are we using uh, for monitoring for our app, for our uh, one app? Uh, we use Sentry, which is a cross-platform crash reporting and aggregation platform. We are using this uh, to track JavaScript errors. Uh, for performance, we are using uh, Graphite to store app metrics, for example, response time or how much time it uh, took uh, to render a screen. Uh, Grafana is UI is, uh, for dashboards on top of uh, Graphite. Anodots, uh, Anodot help us to detect anomalies. Uh, this is uh, server side. Also for server side, we, we use New Relic. Uh, this is also for dashboarding and metrics, and as I said, uh, <coughs> server side. Uh, for business, uh, we have an internal tool that uh, developed by uh, our BI team, and we use it, for example, uh, to monitor user flows and stuff. So cross app upgrades are hard, really hard, and we still have no good way of making it easier. So these are mainly upgrades that include breaking changes in React Native or Xcode, uh, Gradle, or other independent libraries, like our imminent uh, upgrade to React Native Navigation v2 with breaking API changes. Uh, obviously, upgrades are cross-group effort. So we start by upgrade uh, open source libraries to support new breaking changes in React Native, either introduce breaking uh, changes in the library or not, but follow Semver. Each is being tested with its example or test project. These projects are the engine dependencies, so we upgrade our React Native and those dependencies on a branch, and we publish the, the engine to internal NPM with the custom tag using POCO. Test engine against all of uh, the updated uh, libraries. This engine, uh, also the engine is a TDD uh, project and has 100% unit test coverage. Uh, it also has an extensive mock T2E test suite uh, written in, surprisingly, Detox. Once all of the above is, is done, we start testing our internal models with the new uh, engine versions, fixing it, and updating. But still far from uh, perfect, some breaking changes are unfixable. So many times we rely on a native implementation in our open source libraries and internally. Uh, classes accessibility are, uh, and implementation change all the time. So we are thinking about defining and proposing an AP native API to access and extend React Native. In the meantime, uh, we maintain a fork of React Native, uh, make changes, build and publish to our private uh, NPM repo. So all internal projects get this custom version, and we often propose them as pull requests to React Native. Um, so a bit of our, about our future plans. Uh, as we said, things are not perfect for us, uh, and we strive to automate as much as a, of, this, of the process as we can. Uh, so 
We call this process zero QA, uh, or in the more practical name, approximately zero manual QA, uh, because you cannot get zero. Uh, so we incorporate both mock D2E and production D2E in our development and release process. And, and at least that's where we're, we're aiming. Uh, not everything is fully tested as we would like it to be. Uh, setting our goal is at continuous deployment, uh, we're working hard to lower our reliance on manual QA. So this, this is our approximately zero manual QA plans for, to be implemented in the short term. Um, so developers write their unit tests, mock D2E and contract tests as part of the product development. Uh, this is incorporated in CI. Uh, every build and every commit runs all these test suites. And this should not take more than five to 20 minutes. Uh, this will generate a short feedback loop to the developer. Uh, QA engineers use Detox to automate their regression uh, and progression uh, suites. Uh, these tests will never be rock solid. And hence, they will be decoupled from the development process in a different build with a different life cycle. Uh, they can eliminate most of the manual work and, and when a test is broken, it can be tested manually. It will not stop the continuous integration process. Uh, scenarios, of course, are owned by the QA team. Um, collaboration of developers and QA. Um, so dev and QA are obligated to synchronize. Uh, QA will need to educate uh, the dev team on how to write high quality scenarios and review mock T2E suites. And by having a good grasp of what we've already have covered in mocked E2E tests, QA can reduce the amount of production E2E to the bare minimum. Uh, zero manual QA will add greater level of confidence, but the actual de deployment process is still not entirely figured out. Figured out. Uh, so true continuous for multiple independent modules is not a trivial task. Uh, we would need a way to unbundle each module and being able to shrink wrap it separately to in, in a production bundle and send only its changes via like a code push style system um, and then integrate everything on the device itself uh, while keeping the JS bundle load time as low as possible. Uh, we're working on what we call purple. Uh, it's another flavor of the app in addition to the production blue and the dog food orange. This is our Expo style engine. Uh, we want to be able to send a bundle uh, anywhere as long as the bundle is supported uh, by the installed engine on the device on that purple version. It will be able to run, uh, making it essentially like a browser for our React Native JavaScript code. Um, so that's the state of the current things, and it might change tomorrow. We don't really know. Uh, that was it. Thank you very much. Thank you all.